Welcome to the presentation of a lecture from Gnostic Radio, a free public service from the Gnostic tradition of Samael Aun Beor. Gnosis is the root wisdom of the world's greatest knowledge. Gnosis is a universal teaching of practical science, whose goal is absolute liberation from suffering and the complete development of the human being. This lecture is one of hundreds available as free downloads, podcasts, or transcriptions. Our lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures to find teachings that suit you. Twice a month, Gnostic Radio broadcasts live and includes a free online classroom allowing listeners to see images, read related scriptures, and ask questions of the speaker. To learn how to participate, visit GnosticRadio.org. Gnostic Radio is a service of Glorianne Publishing, a non-profit organization. The lectures and radio broadcast have been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. To make a donation, visit GnosticRadio.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. We are going to continue uh, penetrating into the mysteries of the gourd in relation with Klippoth. As we were explaining in the previous lecture related with the conjuration of the seven, where we were explaining about the way in which Kabbalistically we understand what an angel and a demon is. Here you see in the graphic, Jonah, the prophet, being uh, vomited by uh, the Leviathan, or the big fish, the well that is uh, commanded by the Lord in the left to vomit Jonah out of the mouth of this monster that we are going to explain according to the Gnostic uh, Kabbalistic mysteries. To begin, let us understand the word Halloween. Remember that the word Halloween means All Hallows Eve, or the evening of All Hallows, which in English means, Hallows means holy, or saints, in other words, that eventually will appear the next day. Since in the evening, before that day, what you see is monsters, uh, ghosts, Doubles, demons, everywhere. And that, of course, is related with the four seasons. Since we are in autumn, which, according to Gnosticism, is ruled by I-A-O, Yao. Which is uh, Jovis Pater, which some Kabbalists call, without any right, Jave. Because in reality, that Iao is Yod Hava. Or we will say Iyeve, Kabbalistically, pronouncing all the letters of the Holy Tetragrammaton. 
And this is very important to understand because this celebration is very popular not only in the United States but in Europe and is being spread in all Latin America, but many people do not understand the meaning of it. <coughs> in Halloween, you find that the pumpkin is one of the main uh, elements that the people like to decorate and that in the middle of that pumpkin they always uh, place a candle in order to illuminate that gourd. Of course, its profound symbolism is very important to understand in order to comprehend Jonah and the Gourd, which is a book of four chapters, very small, but that contains a lot of wisdom in the Bible. To begin, uh, let us comprehend that the word uh, or the name Jonah is written with uh, the letters Yod, Vav, Nun, Hey. Iona. This is how you write this name in Hebrew, which literally, literally means dove. So here it is very important to understand because the one that is commanding, as you see in this graphic, the fish to vomit Jonah is precisely the Lord in the left. It's symbolized there, but that Lord or that God, symbol of, that we see in the left of this graphic, is uh, called in that book, Jehovah Elohim, or as we said in Kabbalah, yod Elohim commanded the fish to vomit Jonah. And we learned in our lectures that the word uh, uh, or the name yod Elohim, which in the Bible is Jehovah Elohim, is the holy name of Bina, the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is commanding the fish to vomit Jonah. And uh, this Yod uh, as we say in Gnosticism, is called I-A-O. Remember that in Hebrew there is no con uh, vowels, only consonants. Uh, I'm talking about the old Hebrew. And yod he vav he is synthesized in e a o, three letters, because the letter he is repeated as a fourth. So Diodoro Siculus stated that the God of Moses was e a o, God with three uh, letters. Because one is repeated. So that's why uh, we uh, discovered that this E-A-O is ruling this season in which we are right now, which is uh, uh, atom. And, uh, uh, and when we inquire in astrology, we discover that Samael also is ruling in this time the sign of Scorpio. Remember that uh, Samael, the angel of fire, as we explained in the previous lecture, rules Arius, which is related with the pumpkin, because the pumpkin is a symbol of the head. As is pretty obvious in Halloween, everybody make eyes, nose, and a mouth and that pumpkin and put a candle inside of it. It means that only those that have that candle within, that light within, are capable of rejecting all of those phantoms and negative elements that come and knock at your door that day in order to ask you for a trick or a treat which if you read the book of Jonah, you will see the same thing. He goes 
into Nineveh to preach. This city is going to be destroyed in 40 days. 40, as you remember, is the value of the letter Mem, which symbolizes water in Kabbalah. So, behold here the relationship of the water with the fish and with the gourd. Many times we explain that the brain, the skull, and the spinal column are the shield where we find the brain and the spinal medulla, which is the throne of God in our body. So, that gourd or that pumpkin that we find in the book of Jonah, which in Hebrew is called that lad. Remember that knowledge in Hebrew is da'at. But when you add the letter lamed after the D, you pronounce da'at. And that means pumpkin in Hebrew. You may say a coincidence. No. Nothing written in Hebrew, Kabbalistically, is a coincidence. Everything has its meaning. The letter Lamed relates, of course, to the heart and to the chastity. I don't want to explain what the letter Lamed means because there is already a lecture there in the website. But just by adding the la'ad means the knowledge of heart that we had to develop in our head. And of course, Master Samael on the or delivers in his book, Igneous Rose, which is a book related with the magic of nature or hermetic magic that any one of us can practice. The Magic of the gourd, the pumpkin. And he explains there that the mantra that commands the pumpkin or any gourd is the mantra K-A, Ka. And the mantra Ka, of course, relate also to the gourd in Hebrew. Because the name of the plant, not the pumpkin, but the gourd, any type of gourd in Kabbalah, in Hebrew, is kikkayon. Before that letter there, twice, kikkayon. The letter ka is there, or the mantra. And the word iyon, or the vowel eo, which is also in yona. And Yona symbolizes the dove, which in Christianity is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. So here we find symbols related. First, Yona with the pineal gland. The pineal gland is the seat of the Holy Spirit. So we said if Yona the dove is in the pineal gland. We have said, Yona, the Holy Spirit. Bina, Jehovah Elohim, is, has an atom in the pineal gland. And that pineal gland is in the center of the Dalad, or the pumpkin, whose mantra is Ka. So you find also in the name Yona the letter Nun, which all of us know very well symbolizes fish in Aramaic. Iona, and the letter He at the end of that name directly points at the Sephira Malkut, which is at the very bottom. Of the tree of life. Let us uh, observe the tree of life, which is uh, the number six. 
uh, number five in the graphics. The graphic has a number seven there, but really it's number five. So you find that Malkut is at the very bottom of the tree of life. Here we find two tree of lives in order to show you that the woman in the right and the man in the left have the tree of life in their spinal column. We are seeing the back of them. Not the front, but the back. Because the spinal column is in the back. So that is the famous tree of life, which relates, of course, to this mysterious knowledge that we are, of course, unveiling in this lecture. So, the letter Nun is fish in Aramaic. And in this mystery of Jonah and the gourd, we find the fish. Master Samael on the Or explains very openly and clear in his book, Ignis Rose, that the same energies that circulate in the fish any fish of the ocean circulates in any gourd of the field. And this is precisely something very important to comprehend because personally, when I was investigating these forces, the how the gourds or the gourds are serrated with the fish, I internally in the astral plane went with my astral body inside the sea. I remember Vid at the beach and I said, I want to inquire about this mystery. So I walk, walking. In the astral plane, you can walk in the sea, in the very bottom. Of course, when I was walking there, I remember that I said to myself, I am in the astral body, I can breathe water. And then I inhale with a lot of my strength the water of the ocean, and of course, I continue walking. This. I breathe water, no problem. I don't advise to do that in the physical plane. <laughs> when I was there, of course, a little bit of my mind, my pumpkin was thinking, what about if a shark comes here? And I said, I am in the outer plane. I shouldn't be afraid, you know, of sharks because your mind always betray you. And then continue walking. And when I ar arrive at the very bottom of this big ocean, but between parentheses, was the Atlantic Ocean. I found several vines of gourds and pumpkins and many other gourds all over the floor of the ocean. And fish, different type of fish, swimming there. Then, with that experience, it was enough for me to comprehend that the same force, energy that circulates in any vine of any gourd is the same energy that circulates in the fish of the ocean. And we find many varieties of fish in the ocean. Also, we find many varieties of gourds. But the pumpkin, of course, is the main one. Who is, that is, I mean, the lot. That means knowledge. Because it symbolizes the head. Then I understood more profoundly the mystery of Yona, The dove, the prophet, that refuses in the beginning to go and preach to Nineveh. That if you observe the word Nineveh, also has the letter Nun there. Is not by coincidence. And it's because the whole preach, the whole preaching, I mean, of Jonah and the gourd is related to this mystery. The mystery of Halloween, which is precisely the mystery that in this day and age, Gnostics are experiencing, given that we are preaching the doctrine very openly, and people know now how to take advantage of their energies in their body in order not to be sink 
into the abyss. We are, there are two ways to sink into the abyss. The way that Jonah the prophet did and the way that demons do. So this is precisely the big difference. Look. The abyss relates to Klippath, which in this graphic are symbolizing the tail, either in the body of the woman or either in the body of the man. The tail which departs from the coccyx down in which you find the reflection of the tree of life. That that we should uh, uh, experience which is from the coccyx above towards your head, towards your pumpkin. You are experiencing, unfortunately, from your coccyx down into the inferior dimensions of nature. The story of Jonah explains that Jodhaba Elohim, who is Bina, is sending him to preach to Nineveh because he is planning to destroy Nineveh. As uh, we explained in other lectures, that the behavior of people are always rising to heaven. And God knows their iniquities. People always wonder, how is God knowing the iniquities of people all over the world where there are billions? And who is this God that knows everything? You see, knowledge, of course, is Bina, which is in the left side here of the first triangle of the tree of life. Bina means understanding. Bina rules the third triangle of the tree of life, which is the triangle of priesthood, which is, which is gravity is in the Sephira Yesod, which relates to the sexual organs, either in the man or in the woman. And the sexual organs are connected directly to the pineal gland in the center of the brain. In the astrology, it is stated that Neptune controls the pineal gland. And when we study in the endocrinology, we discover that the pineal gland controls the sexual glands. So there is a uh, how you call a circle of activities in our body related with the pineal gland in the, and the sexual gonads. The hormones of the pineal gland help the development of the gonads. And the hormones of the gonads help the development of the pineal gland. We Gnostics know that. And that's why we work with sexual alchemy. In order to fortify the pineal gland, we transmute the sexual energy. In other words, we take advantage of the fish that swim in our gonads in order to fortify our pumpkin. Because in the long run, when we fortify the pineal gland, our mind, whose physical vehicle is the brain, is fortified as well. The knowledge that we have, that we always express, is not coming from the brain or from the mind that we have, but from the pineal gland. This is what you have to understand. The pineal gland is a transmit transmitter, the transmitter, the transmitter of the knowledge that we receive. When we talk about Kabbalah, is to receive. But there are two ways of receiving knowledge. For instance, right now, you are receiving this knowledge through your ears and placing it into your mind, whose physical vehicle is the brain. But in my case, I am utilizing, of course, my mind and my brain in order to communicate this knowledge. But my pineal gland is the one that is receiving. You see? The word to receive is Kabbalah. 
And Bina, the Holy Spirit, Yahovah Elohim, is the one that is in the pineal gland organizing this and receiving from those forces which are above my physical body. So when you put an activity in your pineal gland, and then you receive, you receive, not only when you are giving lectures, but any time. And any one of us, any one of you, can have that pineal gland active in order to receive. That is the true Kabbalah. That we call intuitive Kabbalah. Because in order to feed that that, that knowledge in your pineal gland, you have to work with your heart. Dalat, lamed, related with your heart. With your heart is feeding your pineal gland. In your heart you have intuition. And in the pineal gland you have polyvision. So when you unite your heart with your pineal gland, you have what you call Intuitive clairvoyance. When you receive through images that you have to transform into words. But for that you have to be accustomed to know the word of God. Which is of course symbolic. And this is precisely uh, that intuitive clairvoyance that any Gnostic can develop when Start doing chastity. So then, this is how we receive, you know, for our own particular Bina, Holy Spirit, into our vessel, which in this sky, this vessel is Malkut, the physical body. But how do you call this Malkut or this physical body in this uh, mystery? Is called the whale. The whale is precisely associated with the Leviathan, that enormous whale that indeed is Malkut, the earth, because within that Malkut which is the physicality, whether our physical body or the physical entity of the earth, the planet, within it we find the nine layers of hell. Those nine layers of hell that we find there in the planet also are found in us. We correlate with the planet, with our physicality. So, when somebody enters into this path, enters into the belly of the whale. Remember what we explained in previous lecture. Gihon is precisely also the way in which is written belly in Hebrew. And is the second Sephira, or my, uh, better I said, the second river among the four rivers of Eden. Remember that Eden means voluptuousness. The first river is Pison, the second is Gihon, Hedikel is the third, and Pata or Euphrates, the fourth. Those rivers are inside your earth, your physicality. In previous lecture, we explained that Pisan and Gihon are the two polarities of the sexual energy in the man. And Hedikel and Euphrates are the two polarities of the sexual energy in the woman. When we unite both polarities, then we have the four rivers of Eden there, which is water. So to enter into these mysteries is to penetrate into the belly of the whale, which is, of course, the nine sphere, Yasad, which is the very center of the planet, 
in the very center of our own physicality, which is the sexual energy. To work with it is to work with the Leviathan, to work with Lucifer, which is a sexual potency. Lucifer is a stairs to heaven. Lucifer is a stairs to hell. It depends how we utilize the sexual energy. Of course, in order to become a true preacher of this doctrine, you have to be in the belly of the whale three days and three nights. That is a profound symbol that we have to comprehend and understand because they are not 24 hours. Those days are initiatic in which we have to work in hell. And we have to do a lot of work in order to comprehend that. To penetrate into those three days is to penetrate into the mysteries of this doctrine that we are preaching here. In the beginning, of course, you began like any ghost, like any phantom, like any creature of the underworld. Because this is what we are. Creatures from Klippos. Whether we are Christians, whether we are Jews, we are Muslims, Buddhists, no matter what type of religion we have or believe in, we are inhabitants of the underworld. To penetrate into it is to penetrate into those mysteries. And the first thing that we have to realize is what we are. Many people that receive this doctrine don't like to hear that we point that we are demons. We are devils. Because there are many groups of Pharisees which are the worst type of demons that can exist in hell. What is a Pharisee? A Pharisee is a type of demon that believes that is holy. But of holy, nothing. Those uh, uh, demons receive a lot of karma. Because others are repented and see their own negativity, but Pharisees always believe that they are good because what they believe or because they were born in a certain sect or religion that tell them that they are the chosen ones or the selected ones. As we put over this example in Hinduism. In Hinduism you find the Brahmins that believe that they are selected ones. Nobody can touch them. That type of Phariseeism is wrong. Because then you don't open to the reality of your psyche. When you investigate that, is what you discover, is what we celebrated uh, two days ago, or two nights, Halloween. People go and see in the streets, people disguised and dressed like witches, sorcerers, like Dracula, or people that are coming from the grave. Scary things that people love, because people love what they have within. We will see when precisely at 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the morning, still we were hearing howling. We were in bed already, and everybody howling and screaming. Said, what is this? I was awakening. Oh, I forgot. It's the night of Halloween. Everybody loves that. Make parties of it. And celebrate that. Some of them l l l have the ego of megalomania. Very strong. And they like to be the, uh, dressed or disguised as Superman. Wonder Woman. 
Batman. And all of those idiotic things that in this day and age are very popular. People make movies of them. And people want to be like that. Oh, we like to be like Spider-Man. Like X-Men. And all of that that were created in the head, in the pumpkin of a demon that make movies or make comic magazines. And all of us, when we were children, we were reading that. Garbage. And of course, what we see in the streets is the expression of our minds. And what is what we have in their minds? I scarcely see a fairy there or a beautiful girl just disguised as a fairy because some people have a still consciousness. Beautiful thing inside of us. And most of the time, you see people there that like to be disguised as monsters. And not only in Halloween, but in all the days of this year, you find people making tattoos in their bodies, and all of that is the outcome of the psyche that we have. To express that the 31st of October of every year is like a big party. But if you observe yourself, you will see that this, in this planet is a Halloween every day. People killing other people, putting bombs, and everything is being destroyed. And of course, we observe things and we know that the gods, the Elohim, are merciful. And they want to save of those that are drawn already, the hut. And that's why we are preaching this doctrine. In order for us to realize that and to work against. But for that, of course, in order to see what we have within, we have to put a candle in our brain. We have to put the light. That light is precisely related with our own particular Ruach Elohim that is always hovering upon the face of the sexual waters of chastity. We told you that the waters are related with the sexual semen, whether in the man or in the woman. And that we told you that also that water is the water upon which the cerebral spinal nervous system is flattened on. And that is precisely the cerebral spinal fluid that we have in our own pumpkin. And that's why, uh, behold this, the brain in Taoism is called the Sea of Marrow. Because really, our brain is like a sea. Boisterous in which we find all of these monsters that are, of course, receiving energy and inhabiting in our own head. So, by learning how to handle the energy of our sexual energy in our brain is how that Ruach Elohim, which in the Bible is called Abraham, Chesed, really with Chesed, that spirit that everybody has within. Chesed means mercy. When that Chesed, Ruach Elohim, start floating above the waters of creativity, of creation, then he is saying, let there be light in our heads. And the light was. When that light is illuminating our brain, then we start seeing monsters. That's why when people enter into this doctrine, the first thing that they have is, oh, I enter into this, but all of a sudden I feel tired. I'm seeing monsters, vampires. This doctrine is no good. 
But then don't realize that the worst sin is their own creation. Their own negativity that they have in their minds. When God begins making light in the darkness, we are the darkness, and let there be light, then we start seeing what we really are. But protected by the light of the Ruach Elohim, he said, then we learn how to become children of Abraham with Sarah. Which is a mystery of sexual magic. Or we will say it in Sanskrit words. How to make, to become children of Brahma and Sarasvati. Do you see the, the similitude of the words here? Abraham and Sarah, Brahma and Sarasvati. Why are they similar? Because they have the same root. Brahma is the creator. Abraham, which has the same letters of Brahma, is the one that controls the sexual energy by descending into Egypt with Sarah. The same happens with Brahma and Sarasvati. Hmm? But they have to face all the nati negativity which is in Egypt, which is Malkut. Abraham finds a lot of negativity, Moses as well, because there, in a physicality, is where all the negativity is. But we have to make light. We have to put that candle. That's a symbol that we see in Halloween. The pumpkin with the candle in the middle. But if you go out, you find a lot of pumpkins, different varieties, different of varieties of gourds, different type of heads. But it's rare to find one of those gourds with light within. Because that light doesn't shine if one is a fornicator. It needs to penetrate into the belly of the whale. The Leviathan. Which in Christianity is called Lucifer. The carrier of the light. Did you hear that we had to steal the light from Lucifer, or the fire from Lucifer in order to make light. In Spanish, there is a beautiful word that explains this God, I-A-O. It said, you have to steal the fire from the Diablo. And people are scared, say, well, the, the devil, Diablo. How do you steal the, the fire from the devil? It's not that you are going to go into a cemetery like the witches do in order to make witchcraft. No. You have to realize that the, the devil is you. And that devil, which is you, which is lust, 100%, likes to spill the fire, the light from his or her body. By stopping doing that and transmuting the sexual energy, the water... Then you enter into the belly of the whale. And stop praying there like Jonah does inside to the Holy Spirit. Because he is the maker of light. And realizing all of those monsters that are within. Which are precisely what we are explaining here. Let us see for instance... The second graphic, where it's very uh, explicit there, Jonah chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. It is written, And Jonah, behold here, the symbol of the dove, which is the meaning of the word Jonah in Hebrew. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And Yod Hava spoke unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. And the word of Yod Hava came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I by thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh, 
according to the word of Jod Hava. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believe Elohim, and proclaim a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. If you read, of course, the book of Jonah, you will find that even the king is doing the work, the king of the city. In order to deal with the karma. In the previous lecture, we talked about how Abraham was dealing with the same thing, with the three angels came in order to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And he begins with the Sephira Gebura. What about if you find 50 righteous? I won't destroy it. Then go into Tifereth. What about if you find 45? I won't destroy it. If I, for, I find 45. And go into Netzach. What about 30? I mean 40. Netzach. What about 30? Hod. What about 20? Yesod. You see the religion is going from because Abraham is Hesed. So it's going there to all the Sephiroth and finally reaches Malkut. What about you fight 10? 10 is Malkut. I will destroy if I fight 10. People working in that area, you know, in that Sephira. But the angels didn't find anybody. So Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. But in this story, which is similar to that, Halloween, because he's also destroying everything, death, etc. You find that Jonah is preaching in 40 days. And of course, the people repent. And at the end of the book, you read that Jehovah Elohim doesn't destroy uh, Nineveh. Because all of them were doing the work. We will hope that that will happen in the city of New York. Right? Or in any other city. But you find, you preach this, and you find a lot of Pharisees. There's a no. We don't need that. We already saved. Because Jesus of Nazareth came uh, 2,000 years ago and he died on the cross for our sins. And how come if that happened, how come they have lust, anger, pride, vanity, laziness, and why all in the world of Christianity you find all of these horrible things? If Jesus destroyed all of that with his death 2,000 years ago, all Christians will be clean and all of them will have a paradise anywhere where they abide. But look, how many Christians are in the United States? Different denominations. South America. How many Catholics are? Are they happy? Revolutions, killings, drug addiction, drug trafficking. What is that? Is that the work of Jesus? What happened is that they didn't study the doctrine of the Gnostics bringing by this great, great prophet. You find, for instance, as you read in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 38 to 41, Then certain, certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees, the scribes are those intellectuals that interpret everything intellectually. And the Pharisees are those that believe that they are saved. They are the chosen ones, the selected ones, because they were born in certain religion that tell them that. And say, Master, we will see a sign from thee. Give us a sign. Then we will believe. We will believe in you and we will follow you. But really... In the Gnostic doctrine, we always state, we don't need followers. Because what you need to follow is God within. What will you do of following somebody like you? 
we have the fixed vices and we are in the belly of the whale already because we are practicing this. So we go once in a while out of the belly of the whale and give lectures and says, can you come and you want to be in the belly with the, in the bell with me? Or there are many whales in the ocean and work. That belly is the Leviathan. You want to work with it? Come in the belly. And remember, that belly, that well, is a symbol of Malkut, the earth. So when you enter there, you enter into hell. Into your own hell. To face. Because that's the only way. When Jesus said, Jesus answered in that Matthew 12, he says, At the depraved in adulterous generation six after a sign and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonah for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the well's belly so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth and he left them and departed into the belly of the earth so you see that to be in the belly of the whale is the same as to penetrate into the center of the earth you see the graphic there master Jesus going into hell and that's the sign the only sign that he gave to those that knew about and he gave that because he resurrected three days after. It's written. And when people read literally, he died Friday night, the beginning of Saturday, the, or the Sabbath. And they make additions, you know, according to the days of the week. If he died Saturday, or Friday at the three o'clock, at the beginning of Saturday, Sunday. He resurrected Sunday. I don't see that three days. What is the second of that? You know, entering in a problem because they are counting 24 hours a day. Ignoring that that is symbol. He said it clearly there. As Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly, also the Son of Man will be three days and three nights. So we have to inquire, what are those three days? Are initiatic days, symbolic, something that you have to know when you know Kabbalah. If you don't know Kabbalah, you won't understand what are those three days. First day, you enter into the belly of the whale, you go into the nice sphere of hell in order to steal the fire from the devil. And that is precisely the work of sexual alchemy. Remember, you are the devil. Your, your, that level is called L-U-S-T, lust. Instead of satisfying your lust, you have to steal that fire in order to make light within. And with that light, in the very sexual act, when you the, steal that, you will create for you the solar bodies. You will create, create an astral solar body, mental solar body, and causal solar body. Or in other words, much as my other states, you have to rise. Seven serpents of fire, or seven kundalinis, and seven serpents of light. That is, to build your temple twice. Because your own temple is destroyed. That is called the temple of Jerusalem, your own Jerusalem. When people read the Bible and talk about the destruction of the temple, they think that it is talking about the physical temple. It is beautiful to have a church, a temple, a mesquite a synagogue, in order to pray to that God above. 
But God is very interested only in the temple that we have to build. Remember, Jesus says to Peter, You are Peter, the rock, Yesod, and upon this rock I will build my church. But people are concerned oh, with the building of the temple of Solomon there in the Middle East. Meanwhile, they don't have their own temple built. When you enter into the belly of the whale, you understand, you comprehend that the first thing that you have to do is the reconstruction of your temple. Your body is a temple, and inside of you, you have to build. First with fire, and then a second building, which is of light. That is to reconstruct the temple of Jerusalem within you. If the Messiah comes, and the Messiah is the anointed one, the fire with which you are anointing yourself. And only that that is doing that work, and that did that work, teaches that, But all the prophets before Samael on the or taught that in symbology. Only Samael taught that openly and clear. That's the first day. The building of the temple. When you accomplish that day, then you go and enter into the second day. The second day is... The incarnation of the divine soul, the spiritual soul, that is called in the in Kabbalah, Neshama, which is related with Gebra. Because when you finish to build two times the temple of Jerusalem within you, then you are called a human being because Tifereth is united, which is beauty, the soul. But the initial discover that Tifereth is also divided into Egypt. And that Tifereth is bottled up, trapped, in cage into all of those phantoms, demons that you find in Halloween, the 31st of October. All of that that you see there, and that the people show with their disguises, costumes, is what everybody has within. Well, you have to destroy that. And the only one that can destroy that is the Messiah within, the anointed one which is within that initiate. People are always waiting for the Messiah to come outside, and the Messiah have it coming many times into different initiates. Maybe not preaching the doctrine in the same way that we are preaching it, as Samael on the or, who did the work of three days and three nights. But others did it as well, but in different ways, and delivered the doctrine in different ways because it was not permitted to talk clearly, openly, as we are talking now. Why are we talking openly and clearly in this day and age? Because Nineveh will be destroyed, Sodom and Gomorrah will be destroyed in 40 days. And remember, those 40 days are symbol. Mem, water. And the one that controls the water is the Holy Spirit. All depends of us. In the second day, the initiate incarnates Gebura, which is the Neshama, within which is Chesed. We explained that in the previous lecture. Then that penetrates into the initiate that destroys the ego. And is a completely resurrected master in the fire and in the light. But that is only the second day of the three days. Which is a long period of work that we have to perform. When Anisha reaches that second day, when he is already a reincarnated master. Because the master is Chesed, 
and Gebura together. That's the master inside of us. No ego is a, a, a reincarnated master. He continues his work into the different nine sephiroth. That's the third day. Penetrating to the mysteries of Yesod, Hod, Netzah, Tifereth, Geburah, Chesed, Bina, Chochma, and Keter. Transforming himself into an angel, archangel, throne, dominion, etc. Until reaching the high level according to Christianity, which is Seraphim. Which the Bible calls Hayot HaKadosh. The holy creatures. When somebody reaches that, and then is prepared for the last level of resurrection, the third day. And the third day is when Yod, which is the Holy Spirit, unite with Hava, which is the Divine Mother. Remember in the the conjuration of the seven, we say, in the name of Adam and Eve, who are Yod Hava, be gone, Lilith, let us rest in peace, Nahema. But this Adam and Eve, who are Yod Hava, are not the Adam beneath here. It's Yod above, which is the celestial Adam Kadmon, united with the divine mother, the Shekinah. Chava. So when Adam and Eve, who are Yod Chava, are united above, then emerges that sentence that in the book of Genesis is written. And Adam became a living soul. Translated into the third day of Genesis, or the third day of these three days, of in the belly of the well, we will say, and Yod, which means the Adam, Bina, the Holy Spirit, became one with the terrestrial man within Chava, in the physical body. And that man became a living soul. Or better say, the Holy Spirit became within that man a living soul, an incarnation of the Holy Spirit. And that happens in the resurrection. That happens when, when Jonah is vomited out of the, of the belly of the whale. And that ends the three days. But in order to do those three days, you have to perform inside of you, initiatically, Guided internally by the great masters, a series of psychological works. Psychological means the psyche and the logos within together. That psyche and logos together is called Moses and Jehovah Elohim, or it's called Jesus and the internal Jodhava inside, or Arjuna and Krishna. That's the work. The son of man is called, is a union of the soul, the psyche, with Christ, the Logos, or the Messiah, in other words. That's why when we utter the word psychological, we understand that we are talking about the psyche and the Logos, the Christ, the Messiah, Chokhmah, inside of the individual. And this is how we work. So the whole work is with the tree of life. And of course, we have to work, as we state here, with the Leviathan. So you find there, about Jesus, and now let us enter into the following uh, graphic, in which we quoted, the book of Revelation, chapter 9, from 1 to 11. In order to understand 
what we have to understand. Before entering into this, as we explain in many of the lectures, let me only show you the chapter 9 and the verse 11. As you see, it's 9-11, because there are two ways that you can perform this liberation through Abaddon or to Apollyon. Abaddon is Hebrew and Apollyon is Greek. There are the two ways. The fifth angel, as we explained in the previous lecture, is Samael, the archangel of Geburah. Sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. What we explained in the previous lecture? That the star that falls from heaven into the earth is Geburah. Why? Because the fifth angel is Samael that controls Geburah. So that fire, we explain, always is falling or descending from that level into the earth, which is Malkut, our physicality. But in this day and age, because this humanity is being judged and is being destroyed little by little, the doctrine is being spread, so the bottomless pit is open, meaning that the doctrine of Yesod is given, because that fire descends into the sex, as we explained in many lectures, in a sexuality. So the bottomless pit, Yesod, is open right now. And what is coming out of that bottomless pit? And there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Here we find that when we transmute their sexual energy, as we explained in the beginning, you see smoke coming out of your own selves. You see? Because remember here, we are explaining here this individually. When you start practicing sexual magic, that smoke opens. And you see, smoke is ignorance. Because light is wisdom. But when you start visualizing, because you put the candle in the middle of your pumpkin and see all the monsters that you have within, and you want to receive experiences, beautiful experiences, but you have only nightmares. Why? Because you have a lot of smoke. And that smoke is darkening your own particular sun. By reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. We explained in the lectures that those locusts are flying salamanders of power of Geburah that descend in your sex. And remember that we talk about the sign of Scorpio. When the prophet here or the writer of the book of Revelation says, and have power, and the scorpions have power, he's pointing at the sign of Scorpio, which is ruled by Samael. And Geburah is ruled by Samael. So Samael, fire of Samael, descends into the same Samael, Scorpio. And we are now in Scorpio. It happens that Halloween is celebrated in Scorpio. It doesn't mean that the scorpions are uh, demons. Yeah, they are. But not only scorpions, but all the signs of the zodiac are now full with locusts. But remember that locusts, are fire, forces, that is saying to your physicality. It depends what type of behavior you have with your locusts, with your fire. In the previous lectures, remember that we mentioned 
that John the Baptist in the Gospels was eating locusts and wild honey. And we explained that that is alchemy. Eating locusts means to transmute your fire, your salamanders, for your own good. But of course, the billions of people in the earth, they are not John the Baptist. They are not following alchemy. So, they transform the locusts into lust, lasciviousness, and many other defects that we have within. Matthew Samael says, those locusts are demons from the abyss. And then we think, oh, the locusts are demons from the abyss. And we think, are they, you know, outside of me in the physical world or in the internal worlds? But we explain already the conjuration of the seven, and we explain how Geburah transformed into San Gabriel and Sana Gabriel, and how those Geburah always relate to those fires that we have within, and that everybody has. Some people are following Baal, some others are following San Gabriel, Others are following Havayot, or as other Kabbalists said, Havaya. Others are following Andramelech, Moloch, Lilith, and Nahema. This humanity is following all of those locusts, demons, and they are within. They are not outside of us, they are within us. Everybody has it, no matter what religion we are following. And to those demons, it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, Neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Only those men that do not have the seal of God in their pumpkins. Right? You see that? And of course, those locusts came from the sexual energy up to your head. When you transmute... Your fish, your noon. That's the mystery of Halloween. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a Scorpio, scorpion when he striketh a man. Hmm? Again, it is necessary to know that the Scorpio, the sign of a Scorpio, is the sign that ruled the sexual glands. And that those demons hurt us in different manners, with sicknesses, with karma, whether there is a karma in the physical body or in the emotional body. This humanity is being hurt in different ways. But now, of course, there are demons that specifically work with those locusts in different way, and they await the Kundabafer organ. And they are organizing as a black lodge, and they are organizing that in this DNA, as you see, the government, worldwide government. But you might think, well, those, those demons have more power than... Jehovah Elohim? No. Those demons are controlled by the same forces of heaven in order to punish every nation, in order to punish every town, every person, because all sins are forgiven except the sins against the Holy Ghost. And that's why five months means karma. Five is Geburah. Five is Samael, who has the keys of hell and death. If we take advantage of the doctrine. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall decide to die, and death shall free from them. Those men that are fornicators. Because when somebody is killed here physically, continues being alive with their psyche, 
in limbo. And in there, these demons wants to be killed, will to be annihilated because they are suffering a lot. But death flee from them. Because in order to be annihilated in the ego, you have to descend to the second layer, to the third layer, to the fourth, to the fifth, to the sixth, to the seventh. And when finally you reach the eighth, then you are starting experiencing the second death that the book of Revelations talk about. It's not like you die physically here and immediately you enter into the second death to be annihilated. No. First you have to pay what you owe. And that's precisely the warning that in this day and age we are given to humanity. You have the choice to face your own Halloween here and face your own demons and work in yourself or you will face them anyhow down there that will take at least 1,000 years in order to pay what you owe karmically and to be disintegrated. And that's why it's written there. In those days, those men shall seek death. But it will be easy. You have to pay what you owe first. That's karma. And the shapes of the lakas were like unto the horses prepared unto battle. We explains about the horse in the other lectures that is related to the four bodies of sin. Because a horse is precisely an equine, which means for equal parts. Mind, heart, sex, and physical. That's why I had a shape of, of horses. And on their heads, whereas they were crowns like gold, the intellect. And their faces were as a face of men. You investigate, all of us have faces as human beings, physically speaking. But down there, we are like faces of demons. But we like, we have to faces of men, physically, or even sometimes psychologically. And they have hair as the hair of women. You know, women are always so vain. We will say in this sense, hiding our hypocrisy. Always behaving in some way, but acting in another way. With vanity. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Well, some uh, women that go in that way, which are precisely the, in the bad way, when they have the men in their paws, they sink the teeth in their flesh, like lions. But those women are ourselves too. It's not like only females, no. Those women are demons inside of us which behave like that. And all of us behave like that. First, when we are in establishing a relationship in order to make money, we act like women, very polite. When once we are there, then we sink the teeth like lions in order to get what we want, the money. Isn't that very clear there? And they had breastplates. Breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Organizations, groups. that are protected. Right? Protected by insurance, protected by these breastplates that protect yourself in this jungle, that society that we have, and we organize and go to the battle to each against each other. First, inside any society, in any city, and then after that, against nations. Why? Money. That's the only reason. We want power. And they had tails like into a scorpions. Because that's the power that we developed. When we behave like that, we develop a power like the scorpions. 
we kill. In this day and age, there is two words, very common. To kill and to be killed. We have two phrases, very common. And they are very, becoming very popular now. Not only, not only in the United States, everywhere. And there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Again, karma. Five. What is happening right now? People think, oh, God forgot us. No, God is remembering us. This is what you gain because of your deeds in past lives. But what you did in all your lives. And now you are collecting what you work with or for. What you work for. And this is what we have. And we complain. Why I am a mixed ship and now receiving a lot of pain. Everybody feels that it's good. Right? We are the chosen ones. And because we are the chosen one, let us kill the other unfaithful ones. And when we receive the karma of thinking and behaving like beasts, we complain. And then we turn sometimes into atheists. Because it says, well, I fought for God and God now is punishing me. Because they read the, the scriptures like when they read a newspaper. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. Yes, saw it again. Again, you see? Means those people that know about this mystery of alchemy, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. We will explain. Abaddon is written in Hebrew from right to left. When you experience the right to left, we explain in different lectures that the left of the tree of life begins with Bina, the Holy Spirit, and descends down into Malkut, even to Yesod and to Klippoth. Right? To Yesod, Malkut, Klippoth. This is when you write from right to left, meaning when you are utilizing the sexual force that should be controlled by Hesed from right to left. Abaddon, meaning you are destroying your own psyche, your own life with your sexual behavior. Remember that the angel of the bottomless pit is in relation with the fish, with the whale. But in Greek tongue is written Apollyon. That is the secret Kabbalistic name that is written because in Greek you write from the left to the right. That means we, the demons, we are here in Klippoth. We repent and then we start working with lust and transmuting the force from the left, which is Klippoth, into the right, which is Hesed. Going into Chokmah, which is the Messiah. And this is how you write Apollyon from the left to the right. That's why the writer of the book of Revelation explains that. If you follow Apollyon, then you are a repented demon, like Belzebub and many others. You don't want to be more a demon. You repent of your Halloween and you enter into the belly of the well from the left to the right. But those that believe that they are going to be saved just by belonging to this group or doing whatever they do just by believing, they go from the right to the left with Abaddon down to be destroyed as well in hell. Because whether Abaddon destroys us down there in hell or whether Apollyon destroys us too in the initiation from the left to the right. Either way is destruction. This is what is Kabbalah. If you understand that, you understand all the meaning of this revelation, which is happening right now. Because the angel of Geburah, the fifth, delivered his doctrine, and he explains that very openly, that those demons or locusts are human demons, but everybody thinks that it's somebody else and not us. We have to face that. The first thing in order to enter from the left to the right is to acknowledge 
that we are demons. Because if we believe that we are not, then we are wrong. We believe that we are angels. And there is no angels here. And we go into the next graphic. In Matthew, when those alchemists are working with Apollyon, with the forces of Christ, Apollo, in themselves, then and they enter into the mysteries of the cross. Because the Lord has to resurrect after three days. And look, Jesus, when he had cried against with a loud voice, yielding up the ghost. That is the very end, when he died on the cross. The cross is a masculine, vertical beam, cross with a feminine, horizontal beam, which is the vagina and the phallus united. That is the cross that the Lord is showing us how to die alchemically. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. Now, the veil of the temple is not, uh, how do you call it, rent in twain. We completely come, or better said, Samael on Beor came and took the veil completely out and showed us. This is it. Before, in the time of Jesus, the veil was just rent in twain. And you saw a little bit the mystery. And that's why people didn't understand, didn't get it, because they saw a little bit. But now you saw everything. We are explaining openly everything. So the veil is completely out of the altar. And that's why it's written, in many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Does that sound like Halloween? Corpses coming out of the grave and appearing in Halloween to the people? But it doesn't say it in Halloween. It says in the day saints. First of November is celebrated the day of the saints. And the second, which is today, the day of the souls. What souls? The souls that believe in Jesus? All those saints that believe in Jesus? No. It is written that when Jesus died, he entered into limbo and took Abraham out, Isaac out, and all the prophets, and all the great prophets that came before, out of the grave, out of limbo. What is that? Jesus represents the Savior, Christ, that takes all of those archetypes. Understand that. Because Abraham existed, but he is a great master. But when you read that was found Abraham in all, even Adam and Eve, and he took them out of, the, of limbo or out of hell, that means the entering of the Lord into the lower levels of hell in order to save your archetypes, which are working there, in order to resurrect them. And that's the meaning of that graphic that you see there. When the devil and all that ego is really destroyed, and then Jesus is helping other saints to come out. But people that do not read, who don't know Kabbalah and alchemy, they think that the saints that believe in Jesus were taken out of limbo. All those great prophets or great avatars that came before him. No. He did that with them, of course. Because Chokmah, the Messiah, always performed that in every single initiate. But in our case, that is a symbol of the archetypes that are trapped in hell. And thanks to him, he liberates them and resurrect with him. And appear, of course, in the holy city. What holy city? The Middle East? Jerusalem? No. It means the holy city that exists in the internal worlds. In the fourth dimension. That's the holy city. We have to know how to read in quotations. Otherwise we fall and think, oh, the holy city, the holy land there, which is no longer a holy land. 
too much massacres and killings, etc., of that holy parts of the earth, but because there are many people there that interpret the scriptures according to their own whim and think that the prophets have to be fulfilled according to what they believe is the symbol of. But this is initiatically, as you see. And this is precisely what happened at the end in Jonah's uh, chapter 4, the last chapter, from the 5 to the 8. It's written, So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city, and there made him a booth, and sat on there it in the shadow, till they might see what will become of the city. And Yod Havail of him prepared a gourd, and made it to come up over Jonah's, the head of Jonah, that it may be a shadow over his head. It's very clear there. The gore in the head. To deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceedingly glad of the gourd. But God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day. And it smote the gourd that it withered. And it came to pass when the sun did arise that God prepared a vehement east wind. And the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished in himself to die and said, It is better for me to die than to live. Beautiful esoteric knowledge there. We explained in the previous lecture about the objective reasoning. After doing the three days and three nights and preaching, then the initiate receives objective reasoning, the lad, knowledge, the comprehension of the wisdom of God within. But there are six degrees of objective reasoning in the pumpkin. And that's why it's written there that the head of Jonah is developing that type of reasoning. This is what is written in between the lines. And he is waiting for the destruction of that great city. In this day and age, we will say, in the beginning, Master Samael gave a lot of prophecies about the different destructions and wars that will go and appear in this civilization. But dates has been changed and other things have appeared. Why? Because if you read the book of Jonah, you will understand that it depends on the behavior of the people. This civilization will be destroyed. But before being destroyed, the Elohim are given space to different souls in New York, in Europe, South America, Africa, Australia, to work with this doctrine. And they are holding the four winds of the earth that are waiting to come and to destroy this humanity. So, some prophecies that are written there in the year such and such will this humanity receive a punishment. Meanwhile, we are in the year 2013. And still we have time, which is good, because then we keep preaching and helping other souls that want to be, to want to be helped. In the book of Jonah, God didn't destroy Nineveh, because the whole city repented, even the king. But I don't think this time will happen that, in this civilization. Right. Even though... The mystery of Jonah being there, covered his head with a pumpkin, is a ritual that the master wrote in book Ignus Rose, in which we call for the multitudes to receive the doctrine. We perform that ritual many times in different places, and now we see the results. This knowledge is being spread that really... The white lodge is open in the arms, thanks to the ritual of the pumpkin. 
in which you find that is related even with the gong or the Chinese Taoism. The gong, the pumpkin, and other things that are written there that you can read because the book of Ignis Rose is very openly explaining. Certain things are not explained, which I personally discovered when I was doing the ritual. I was guided to do it in a certain way, which is not written in the book. And it is because this ritual is very holy. Jonah performed it in order to make the city to repent after preaching that the Nineveh was going to be destroyed. And at the end, it was not destroyed. But that Nineveh, put the example, it will be individually you. Because each one of us is a city, psychologically speaking. If we repent, that particular individual, Nineveh, won't be destroyed in hell. But will be destroyed according to the doctrine of Jonah. Three days and three nights in the belly of the whale. In order to develop objective reasoning. Why is Jonah angry? Well, that happened is a way in order to explain. It's not anger of ego, but a disappointment. When somebody resurrects and they discover that they develop reasoning, objective reason, in a certain degree, and still there are many degrees up, and that they are disappointed. And that's why Jonah says, it is better for me to die than to live. To be alive with this objective reason that I acquire, I need to descend again and to build another degree. That's the meaning of that. Because that sign of Jonah, not only Jonah the prophet did it. Many men that enter into this path experience that being in the belly of the whale. Remember, it's a symbol. Do not be childish in thinking that really that prophet was swallowed by a big fish. It will be digested there with all the assets. You know what I mean? To be in the belly of the... Of the remember, Gihon is belly. And Gihon relates to Hesed, which is the Holy Spirit of the Ruach Elohim. United with the Holy Spirit, working with the waters. Working also with Lucifer, Gihon. Because within Gihon is also Pisan, which is uh, Gebura. Gebura is Pisan, and Gihon is Hesed. Between two of them is fire and water. Being inside of that belly is to work with those forces inside of us. So every single Gnostic that is working in this day and age with this Doctrine is in the belly of the whale. And you have to learn how to become a crocodile within that belly. Remember that. And when you start working in it, you automatically are also in the center of the earth. This one that is talking to you, experience that. That's why I'm talking to you with a direct experience. You find yourself in the center working with the, your own devils with fire. And you find also in the very bottom of the sea working with the pumpkin and with the fish. Everybody experiences that when he's working seriously. With Neptun, Poseidon, the father of Sidon. Uh, do you have questions? Yes, of course, it is these three days and three nights, if you make the initial, it gets six. Is in other words, working with the light and with the darkness, or working with good and evil. 
After you work three days in the light and three days in the night, or as the Master Samael says, you have to learn how to walk with the right foot and with the left foot, which are the two sides of the tree of life, the right and the left, to deal with sheep and to deal with goats. And after doing the whole work inside of you, you develop your objective reasoning according to your level. And of course, uh, when you reach that level and you are not pleased with that, you can develop another, but you have to renounce everything and descend and to start with a scratch, like you never did anything. And that's very harsh. As you see, you know, in the beginning of the book, Jonah is thrown in the sea to work again with another reasoning. And after that, he is displeased with that reasoning. Only those that reach unclad, the higher, he says, I'm pleased, I'm happy. Right? But Jonah symbolizes precisely that part of the Holy Spirit. That you work with the Holy Spirit because Jonah means dove. You work with the Holy Spirit and the forces of Yesod, which are uh, the fish. Your question? What word, uh, what worm corrodes the door of the church? That worm is the ego. Even after the resurrection? Well, uh, in this case, when somebody resurrects, it's the mind. Because one day I asked the Master Samael, Well, Master, when you annihilate all your ego, and there is no ego within you, how come angels fall or descend? Based on what? On the mind, he says. When the ego is annihilated, something has to be instead of it, and it's the mind. Even if it's solar, it's the mind. You have to control your mind. If you don't control your mind, that's the worm that corrupts your objective reasoning, which is the pumping, the gourd. Yeah, in this case, uh, it's good your question, it's God that makes the worm. Means when you work with God, He wants more, uh, I mean, he, he wants to create an Adam into the image of the Elohim. And He or commands His Son to descend. And He descends. Sometimes the Son, when He wants to descend because His God commanded to descend into Nineveh, sometimes that Son or that child, in other words, because he's very weak, uh, falls. There are also you know, individuals that fall, but they want to descend, but they couldn't. Because in order not to fall, you need a lot of willpower. When you penetrate, in this case, as a man, into the belly of that Malkut, which is the well, which in this case will be the woman. And if that well is very strong, not too many angels control those forces. After millions of years not to have sex, and all of a sudden, sometimes they fall. Willingly. Sometimes they don't. It's because they couldn't control it. But when they do not spill the fire, that's called a descent into the belly. And they start working and easily work another degree. Problem is, when they fall, because the ego rises again. And all of those Draculas, again, are born within. And then that fallen angel becomes a demon, because what makes us a demon is lust, anger, greed, pride, vanity, laziness, gluttony, etc. That's what makes us demons. And if we have that, we are demons. After he vomited from the, from the well, the three days journey to Nineveh, but he makes it in a day's journey, then he, he gets there in a day. What happens for the other two days? No, when, they, when he is vomited out of the belly, he makes a three days journey. Those three days are also symbolic because are related to the higher Sephiroth. Above the men, Binah, Chokmah, you know, that journey is initiatic. 
is related with the third mountain. In this case, we will say, Samael on the Or, who is the modern Jonah who resurrected, is now in those three days journey toward the higher Sephiroth. And because of that, he is delivering us the strength, the power with to, to preach the doctrine. Hmm? And uh, everything will happen according to the law. Well, the question is, is the modern Jonah that I said, Samael on the or, related with the advent of Samael, the 27th of October? It's very clear. Because Samael, I repeat, governs Arius and Scorpio. From Geburah, he descended into Scorpio, ruled by him the 27th of October, in order to start the work of the three days that we explained. And of course, he did it, but he started the 27th of October, that we celebrate always the incarnation of Samael in the earth. It's related. It's very clear there. If you want to see the symbols uh, of the forces of Heaven, in relation with what is written in the Bible, is always repeated. But Samael himself is precisely the fifth. He did the work in himself, and therefore he teaches that. In order for us to repeat that. And if we repeat that task inside of us, we will become angels of Samael, the Logos. Other Jonas. But for that we had to work three days and three nights. And to acquire our own particular individual objective reasoning. Yes? What's the difference between the serpents of fire and the serpents of light? What is the difference between the serpents of fire and the serpents of light? The serpents of fire are related with the seven bodies of the human being from Malkut to Hesed. Malkut, Yesod, Hod, Netzach, Tifereth, Geburah, and Hesed. Those are the seven serpents that reach us to the level of human being. But in order to enter into, to finish the first day, the first day of Jonah, we had to descend down and to take the direct path and to rise the seven serpents of light, which only are awakened by the bodhisattvas that enter into the first day of, in the belly of the, of the whale. Then he is uh, related with the light that we developed initiatically, related with the first mountain, the first mountain. On, the Master Samuel explains that in the first in the book, The Three Mountains. That is the first. You said, I did the first mountain. It means that Hesed did it, because it's not the personality here. Sometimes I found, uh, uh, between parentheses, people that tell me, such a such fellow, and they name the personality name of that fellow, says, is a master of the first mountain. And I said, I don't think so. How a personality of somebody will be a master? That personality is a demon of Halloween that had to be disintegrated. No matter what is his name, it could be a master. His inner being might be. But if you're saying that he's a master of the first mountain, you are telling me that he said, internal he said, of that person that you name rose the seven serpents of fire and the seven serpents of light. If that is true, more congratulations for him, because for me, it doesn't make anything. Whether somebody does it or not, 
So what? You have to do it yourself. Not because somebody did it and you start following that person, you are going to be a selected one. No. You select yourself, you work three days and three nights. Otherwise, it doesn't matter if the, how, many, how millions of people are following this great initiate, Jesus, that he said, there is somebody bigger than Jonah here, and these people are not repenting. But he did it. And a lot of people are following now and believing in him. So what? Just because they believe in him, they are going to make the three nights and three days automatically? I don't think so. This is something alchemical, Kabbalistic, yeah? When Jesus said, uh, I think he said, after a certain amount of days, you're going to destroy the temple and no one will be able to rebuild it. Was that the crystal, was Christ destroying the crystallization of the three clouds? Yeah, the destroying of the temple and rebuilding that with no human hands, it says, is written. This temple we will destroy with human hands or whatever and resurrect or rebuild it with uh, divine hands. Of course, that is in relation with these three days and three nights. This temple that we call ourselves is a temple that is in ruins will be destroyed. But uh, the Lord destroy everything, but if we allow him to work in us, he will rebuild it in three days. Of course, people expect in three days, you know, how many construction workers you need going to do that. It's initiatic days. It's symbolic. Right? Jesus did it. Samael did it. Great alchemists in the Middle Ages did it. Great initial did it in three days. We also we can do the same thing. And you are in the first day, good. As this person says, Oh, I, he's an initiate of the first day, first mountain. Well, my congratulations. But it has to be three days. And the first day is just nothing in comparison with three days. Most of the initials first only the first day, the half of the first day. Because they don't even take the direct path. They only rise the seven serpents of fire, and this is it. Bye-bye. I don't want to enter into the direct path because it's very difficult. It's what they say. So, a question here? Yeah. Um, is it rightly said that we have to create the light before we can work to destroy the egos? Moreover, can we reach the light with the book Practical Astrology? Can we create the light before destroying the egos? The only light that we can rise before destroying the totality of the egos are the seven serpents of light. Because first, the Lord needs light in order to see what he is going to destroy. Of course, before incarnating the Lord, if we annihilate a lot of ego, we advance a lot. We make a lot of light for ourselves. And this is a very important question. Because... In the beginning, when you start doing this work, the Elohim help you. You start having lucid experiences in the astral plane, astral projections, and you're happy. You say, oh, this is what really I like of Gnosis. I'm experiencing the astral plane, the mental plane, the causal plane. This is beautiful. You are experiencing that with borrowed light. Listen carefully. Borrow light. That light doesn't belong to you. It's the light of the Elohim, the white lodge, that is helping every single soul happily. And that's why everybody that enters into this path experiences that. And they start thinking, oh, I am a great initiate. No. Anybody is helped by the Elohim in the beginning. But once you reach 18 year old, Meaning, once you reach the fifth initiation of mere mysteries, then the Elohim, our parents, spiritual parents, says, no more light for you. Now, if you want to keep advancing, make your own light. Annihilate your ego, or keep annihilating your ego. Then the initial enters in what is called 
the spiritual night. That spiritual night is a Halloween. Because the initiate already is in the level of Tifereth. Meanwhile, he only experiences nightmares. He is facing his own demons, defects and vices. Because he is alone. I remember many uh, experiences. The master explained, for instance, in the book, the mystery of the golden blossom. When he says, Beethoven passed for the spiritual night. Instead of failing like many other disciples, he just awaked the intuition in his heart and created a great music. And finally, when he was writing the ninth symphony, <coughs> when he was going out of the spiritual night, but the spiritual night endures according to the karma and the level of the initiate. Sometimes it's years and years. Once in a while you have an experience and then darkness again. And you go to sleep and you are vocalizing mantras. And what do you experience? I mean, I'm talking about here those initiates that reach Tifereth, mastery. Don't think that every, everything is pitchy for those. No. Nightmares and demons, etc., and being attacked. And I say, what is this? Supposedly that I am on this level, I have to receive help. No. You experience your Halloween, your spiritual night. That so you have to be patient and to work against those demons until finally reaching the second day. If you take, took the direct path. Because if you took the spiral, it's easy too. You enter there and uh, you forget about the destruction of your ego. You do it slowly and eventually in other life and like that you go ahead. But that is precisely the mysteries of the spiritual night. You want to experience that only after the fifth initiation of major mysteries. Another question? Can we reach the light with practical astrology? Yeah. According to the level of free consciousness that you have. Because remember that. That light shines in the consciousness, not in the ego. If you are not late, more ego, more light, more light. That is good. That's why the Master Samael explains in his books. Annihilate your ego beforehand. Meaning, before reaching the fifth initiation. Because if you have a lot of ego annihilated before reaching the fifth initiation, the Elohim, the God, the Master says, no more light for you, for mass. Now you build. But you already build it, you're happily. But many initiates build without uh, annihilating the ego. They forget. They are lazy. So when they reach that level, they enter into a very profound night. And they have to work seriously and be patient. With patience, you will possess your archetypes, your soul. And of course, at that level, and before that level, the master delivered all the practice of astrology, all the runes, in order to help. Because we are very heavy. We have 97% of Halloween within. And of saints, which is the first of November, and souls, we have only 3%. So who wins? Halloween, of course. And that's why uh, today nobody celebrating the Day of the Souls. Yesterday, who celebrated here the Day of the Saints? Who? But the uh, Halloween, oof, there were millions all over the world. Because this is what we are. Another question? No more questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he expressed some disappointment when Nineveh was saved. Um, why might this be? Well, it's a disappointment that some uh, people experience. Disappointment because it was not destroyed. Yeah. Well, because the Lord is always merciful, right? And when you preach, for instance, in 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. And you reach and 
making people to repent. And after that, you will wait to see what the Lord is going to do. And he doesn't do it. And then what the people will say, this was a liar. <laughs> he was just talking baloney. Nothing happened with what he said. Right? Why? Because they don't know that the law of the scale is working there. The Lord is going to destroy because a lot of karma, but a lot of people who work in favor of dharma, of the doctrine, obviously is going to change the destiny. But as I said, in this day and age, I don't advise you to go to any mountain to see if this civilization will be destroyed. Because everything will be destroyed. Now, uh, the only hope is to be an inhabitant of the Golden Age. Because we reach the end of this Aryan root race. Or as the Bible calls, the race of the Gentiles. It's finished. Do whatever you do. It will be destroyed. Tsunamis, earthquakes, famines, many ways. But if we want to be associated with the golden age, well, we have to work in ourselves. Thank you very much. The presentation of this lecture was made possible by donations from listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most Gnostic schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every single donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticRadio.org. For questions and deeper understanding of this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing and available from booksellers worldwide. Visit GnosticBooks.org to learn more. Thank you. May all beings be happy.